We're following that 4.8 magnitude earthquake and subsequent aftershocks that rocked the northeast United States on Friday. And while the epicenter was in central New Jersey, people across the region have reported feeling tremors. And that includes here in Manhattan. Take a look at this EarthCam video of the New York City skyline. Look at it just bouncing around there. Well, there are luckily no reports of widespread damage, but students at Rutgers University say they felt confused and disoriented. I was basically just sitting on my chair and the ceiling started like rumbling and it was really scary because the whole room felt like shaking. I've never actually felt an earthquake before living in New Jersey, so I was very, very concerned as to what was actually happening. John Mutter joins us now. He's a professor of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Columbia University. Good to have you with us, Professor. So as someone who studies the Earth and lives here in the Northeast, what was your reaction when you felt the quake? Um, I was on the 15th floor of a building at Columbia University. And although uh, this is my specialty, I was just as perplexed as everybody <laughs> else. We were all looking at one another, you know, saying, what, what on Earth is going on? And I didn't in initially think it was an earthquake either because it's so infrequent. Uh, the ones that you can feel are uh, tremendously infrequent, so you're surprised by them. Well, give us some understanding of a 4.8 earthquake and a 4.0 aftershock, which is the largest aftershock we've had so far. How does that compare? And uh, given that magnitude, does it surprise you at all that there hasn't been more reports of significant damage? So in, in New York, the, the issue is that most of our buildings have not been built with any thought towards uh, earthquake resilience. And as you know, uh, bricks and other objects fall off the facade of uh, buildings all the time without any help from nature. Uh, that's why we have these dreadful scaffolding and bridges over our uh, sidewalks. You know, we the buildings shed bricks, et cetera, uh, all the time, which means that it doesn't take much shaking in order to shake all of that stuff loose. Um, because we, we're just not prepared for it. Well, given that, I'm wondering what is the appropriate action to take if people start to feel tremors? What sort of safety precautions uh, should we have? Is it better to stay inside, to go outside? So if you can get out into an open area, you know, if you could run into Central Park, that's great. Nothing's going to fall on you in Central Park. If you can't, uh, you should get under some strong structure, um, a, a table, a desk, um, or uh, inside a doorway. Uh, doors are more structurally sound than uh, other parts of a building. Um, and you yeah, see the up. importance of staying away from shelves that have things on it. And, and <laughs> it's interesting seeing these videos even of, of the dogs trying to figure out what should I do, where, where yeah. should I go. Uh, in the moments that we have remaining, Professor, tell us what's happening underground that affects how intense an earthquake will be. So the, the issue with this earthquake is it was very shallow. It was only about uh, five kilometers below the surface. That means that you know it's going to cause a lot of shaking, um, even though it's you know it's not a huge earthquake. It's not a magnitude nine, but because it's shallow, we we feel it um, more than if it was much deeper. This magnitude of earthquake is not totally uncommon in our area. They're infrequent, um, but usually they're deeper. All right, Professor John Mutter, thank you. And I, I just should say, with respect to the, uh, your previous guest, is that it has nothing to do with the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, because some people may start to read into the eclipse, the cicadas, the earthquakes in Manhattan, yeah. and think something's up. But it's good to have well, that reassurance. Nothing to do with the <laughs> Thank you, Professor.